she has done it again. Claire from what is now called Stitch Buzz, formerly known as Luna Graphics Co. You know her products from the many videos that I've done. Today is the Quick Pocket Template. And this is going to make such a big difference when you guys are trying to make welt pockets. And I know welts are one of those things as garment sewers that we're like, eh, I don't know if I can do that. And if I screw it up, it can like kind of, you know, mess with the entire garment. You know, that one little pocket not looking perfect can kind of make it look a little bit homemade and the construction just not as perfect as everything else that we've had a ton of practice at. But Claire has come up with this really cool product to help make heads or tails of just how to construct them and how to ensure they turn out beautiful every single time. Let's cut to the tutorial, sew along, sew with me, quilt pocket demonstration template. So first things first, we've got to cut out our materials and all of that is explained right here in this lovely um, instruction booklet. We're going to go through all the steps one by one. So the first step is to cut out your fabric and it says simply right here that you need to cut uh, a template size. So one rectangle, you can do a little quick pocket or a big quick pocket, four and a half inches versus five and a half inches. Um, I am going to illustrate with the five and a half inch one just because it's bigger and it'll show up better on camera, but I need to make uh, I need to cut out fabric that is this size times two, one for each side of your welt. And then I need to cut a pocket bag. And depending on how deep you want your pocket bag to be, like how far in you want your hands to go, those are all illustrated in this beautiful little diagram. So I am going to just make the smallest one because I'm making like a faux illustrative welt. This isn't actually a real project. So I'm just going to make the smallest one. And then I also need some interfacing that is the size of this as well. So let me get to cutting all of that out. Okay. So I went ahead and cut out what will be our garment, uh, whether this be at the back of a pair of pants or the front of a like bomber jacket or any other kind of jacket. This is our garment. This is our welt pocket. <laughs> and this is our pocket bag. Isn't she going to be beautiful? Um, I'll press that out here in a second. Okay. So following along with the instructions, there is a variation on the pocket bag so that after you're done sewing your welt pocket, the lining will show. So if you want that as an added detail, um, you can certainly do that here, but we are gonna move along with this version. All right, so now we need to decide the location of the pockets template opening on our actual garment, which is the black with the teacups. And the way that she has you place the um, pocket windows is to decide where you want your welt pockets. A lot of time this is going to be marked on your sewing patterns as well. So don't um, fret about this too much. If your pattern was designed with a welt pocket already, that's already on there. If not, then you can place your pocket. You can do it obviously uh, parallel to the hem. You can do it at an angle, you know, if you're doing like a bomber jacket or something. For illustrative purposes, we're just gonna make this nice and simple and we're gonna do it in the center of our two garments. So iron a crease uh, in the center of where you want your pocket to be. So if you want your pocket here, iron a crease right along the middle here. If you want your pocket here, iron a crease along the bias, so on and so forth. So we have our crease now. You can barely see it, but it's it's there. Um, it doesn't need to be like permanently pressed. We're just looking for a, a, a reference guide to where to place this. So the pocket template has little notches. One is there and one is there, and there's a blue line that goes right through the center of the bumblebee. And you are gonna line that up 
with your crease that you just made uh, wherever you want your pocket. You need at least an inch along the top here so that you have enough sewing room. So let's put ours here. And now you are going to trace around the center little window. Okay, and once you have your inner box traced, now you need to grab some pins and we are gonna place the pins in each of these four little corners here of the template. Actually, let's put them here. That would be a little bit easier to line up. All right, so we're gonna stick them in the halfway marks and this is to give us a guide to where this template goes on the wrong side of your fabric, like so. So now we've got four little anchoring points and we've got a little box. So we're gonna flip this all over. And again, you can see um, our anchoring points. You can see the center crease. So line everything back up again, best you can. Maybe um, straight pins without a uh, head would be easier. I have those, but didn't think about it for this. Okay, anyways, so now we wanna trace this box again. All right, and you can see we've got our little box there. Okay, next we need to set this aside and get the template uh, the hole marked on the uh, pocket bag as well. Okay, and then you want to line up your pocket template with the uh, top edge of the wrong side of the pocket bag. And when you do that, you're gonna draw in, and I'm switching to a marker so you guys can see that better, hopefully. Draw that box in like so. All right, so now we've got a box on the right side of our garment, a box on the wrong side of our garment, and a box on the wrong side of the um, pocket bag lining. Okay, next we've got to get this interfacing, which we cut out earlier, uh, applied to the wrong side of the garment. So you simply just center it over the box that you made in the previous steps and iron it on according to the manufacturer's instructions. Now we need to match the windows of the little boxes that we made. So the so the so they're right sides together. And I find the easy way to do that is to put a pin through this corner, matching it up with its corresponding corner underneath and slide the pin in until it can't go anymore, and then kind of like tack that down. And then go to the opposite corner, take your pin, put it through the corner, match it up with the corner of the box underneath, slide it in, flatten it all out, and anchor it down. And then you can double check the other two boxes just to make sure everything is lined up right, but it should be now that you've done the first two. All right, now you've got your two pieces with the box completely lined up in the center. Next, you're gonna go to your machine and you are gonna sew around this box entirely. Okay, so we've got our box here and to really test how accurately I did everything, we can flip this over and see that it pretty much lines up exactly with the box that's under the interfacing. So I did a decent job there, I'm happy about that. Okay, your quick pocket template also comes with this little doodad that goes in the middle of the template, like so. And this um, has markings on it as well. Can you see those? dots and slashes, and that is so that you can mark your cutting lines. So you take this little guy, you line it up with the stitching that you've just done, and you put a dot in the dot, 
and a line in the slash. Like so. Isn't that so cool? It's just incredibly thoughtful. Okay, so there's that. And now this is going to be your cutting line. And you know, you take, um, the, you have the little, little uh, triangle that gets made, little triangle that gets made, and then you are gonna cut through all of this, like so. So let's cut, and normally, if I'm using like actual fashion fabric, this is the part where I'm having a near heart attack because you do cut through your fabric and it just feels wrong. It feels like there is no way that this is actually what I'm supposed to be doing, but you are and you see how it works out in the end. But you wanna try and uh, cut really close to those corners. The closest you can cut to that stitching, the better your pocket bag will be. Even if you wanted to grab some like embroidery scissors or something super, super sharp, um, that would be a good idea to help you with that. But you can see that we have cut through the triangles as well as the line down the middle. Now we are gonna push all of this through the garment so that it all appears on the wrong side, like so. And this is where you can really tell if you did a good job cutting because you'll see if there's any like folding or buckling, this is where it will appear. I mean, you can press out a little bit of it, but if it's really bad, go back in and uh, snip closer to those stitching lines. Okay, now we are gonna pull this back and you can see this little itty bitty seam allowance that we have here. We are actually gonna sew, we're gonna understitch essentially. We're understitching the seam allowance to the long sides of the window with a zipper foot. So the seam allowances get sewn to the lining. That way they all roll to the wrong side um, naturally and you don't have any of that ever showing. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. Okay, so now this is the right side of our garment. We have a huge gaping hole in it. And then on the back, we have our pocket bag that has been understitched. You will be able to see that stitching, but when we close up the pocket, then uh, from the inside of your garment, you won't be able to see this. You won't be able to see any of that anymore. But we have to put our welts in. Obviously you could do this in a contrasting color would be really fun, contrasting fabric, maybe a metallic something, whatever. But traditionally they're all gonna be the same. I'm using a separate fabric because I want you guys to be able to see the differences of the different pieces and what exactly it is that I'm doing. All right, so the first step to deal with the welt pockets is to base them together, right sides together. So for each side of your garment, for each pocket that you're making, you need two of the welts, which were cut to be the size of our template, remember? Okay, so we're gonna base down the very, very center of our welts. So we're gonna um, base this at one and a quarter inches. You can also feel free to line these up, then place your center notches that are on your template, the blue lines that are on your template. You can line those up across the length of your welt and then draw in a little line and that is what you can um, use to, as a guide for your basting. Okay, and once you've got your basting in, you are gonna fold these, you have like four sections now, and you're gonna fold these so that the wrong sides are together. And this to me was one of the more brilliant parts of this tutorial because inevitably, if you don't do it this way, your center welt seam, it it gets a little bit wonky. So I love this little trick for making sure that that center of your pocket is nice and straight. Okay, so she in the instructions is gonna have you center this uh, welt, uh, the little seam that you just made in the center of this opening, pin it all down, flip it over, and then temporarily um, baste it like with hand stitching or with steam -a seam I, on the other hand, think it's easier to go ahead and lay down your steam -a seam because you know the steam -a seam is gonna be on either edge of the opening, right? Then you want to peel away the backing 
like so, both sides. Okay. And then you want to center your uh, welt. And it's going to line up with the top of the pocket bag because that's where we put the hole for the pocket bag, remember? So I just line it up with that again. And now I'm going to go to the iron and press this down and make sure that the steam seam stays down. All right, and you can see once you do that, you still got your uh, welt centered. Um, and if you've done all your measuring correctly from the beginning, then that should be no problem doing it the way I said versus how it is in the instruction booklet. Okay, speaking of the instruction booklet, she provides three different ways for you to finish off your welt, which I just think is very comprehensive and really is gonna cover any kind of welt pocket that you could possibly, possibly need. So you have the invisible stitches, you have the top stitching, and you have the stitch in the ditch, which is also gonna allow you to um, insert a zipper if you want a zipper inside your welt pocket as well. So you're going to pick the method that you want to do and follow the few instructions that are there. I am just going to do the invisible stitches because that is what I do most often and I think that's what you guys are most often going to do. So I will show you how to do this one, but the other two um, options are really easy to do as well. And this is how it's done. It's super, super simple. Okay, so you're going to pull all of this back. You've got your welts attached to your uh, pocket bag. That's the steam seam holding that in place. And you pull this back to reveal, you've already got two lines of stitching. One is the stitching from step five, which was the box that you did around. Then the next one is your under stitching. And then the, the very, very edge where you've only got this little, little bit. Let me show you with a pen. This little bit right here, this edge right here is where you were gonna sew the pocket bag and the welt to your main fabric. And you were gonna start on a long edge and go all the way around like this, pulling the fabric back, and then pulling the fabric back again, you are going to reveal your little triangles and you were gonna sew right along the edge of this triangle right here to hold the triangle part down. And then you'll sew the bottom part of all of this. And then you'll come around and do your final triangle on the other side. This is not all done, I wanna say, before I go to the sewing machine, this is not all done in one rectangle. You're gonna do one side, and then the triangle, and then another side, and the triangle. You can do both sides and then both triangles. Whatever order you want them to do can be done. It's not one continuous box. I just wanna be clear about that. Okay, so next you're gonna take your seam ripper and you're gonna remove your basting stitches like I explained earlier. Just be very careful. You've only basted them in, so they should come out pretty easily. All right, great. And you would obviously take the time and care to, <laughs> to pull out all those little um, threads, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move right along. And so the last step is for us to take our pocket bag, this little guy that's hanging down. Currently, we don't have a pocket at all. We've still got a hole. Um, so that's that doesn't serve us that well. But once we do this, now all of a sudden we have a pocket. So you are gonna fold this up right sides together and you are gonna stitch along all three sides. And if your jacket or pants or whatever is unlined, obviously feel free to serge these edges. I'm just gonna sew them because um, this is just like a fake garment, um, but you can definitely serge them if you uh, want them to look pretty on the inside. All right, I went ahead and gave it a really good press as well. And you can see we've got an adorable little welt pocket which if we wanted to stick anything into it, it would stay, oh, I've got to, I've got to like, figure out a way to use this, right? Obviously, every time I try and find fabrics that are like, they don't go together, somehow miraculously, they kind of look cute together. <laughs> um, anyways, here is the backside. Again, nice and tidy. If you wanted to um, serge your seams, it would be even more so. But I mean, it's just 
kind of genius. And I so I told you guys, it's really, really cool, right? I don't know how Claire's brain works and how she's able to simplify these things and utilizing these acrylic tools make it so much easier than the regular way. But but she does and it's awesome. So hopefully you guys will run out and grab one of these quick pocket templates. It comes again with the instruction booklet and then two templates, one four and a half inch and one five and a half inch. So you have your options there. Um, and get to making wall pockets. You can add them to jackets, to the back of pants. That's a very common place like in ready to wear. Um, you can add them to like a shirt if you wanna do them on your lapel. You can really put them anywhere that a regular pocket, a regular patch pocket would go. And they're gonna look beautiful with this template. It's awesome. So check the description box for a link and a coupon code for all of Claire's templates and rulers. My code is good site-wide, no minimum, so. Head on over there and check it all out. And that's going to do it for me today, but I will see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.